Welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson, we're going to be finding the domain of logarithmic functions. Let's start with the function log base 2 of x. We're going to rewrite it exponentially so that we can plug in values for y instead of x. So our base is 2, our exponent is y, and it's equal to x. Now we're going to complete the table. We're going to plug in a negative 2 for y. 2 to the negative 2 is 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 fourth. 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. 2 to the 0 gives us 1. 2 to the first is 2. And 2 squared is 4. Now you go ahead and plot those points on the grid. I'll show you my graph here. Notice that I drew a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. That's because 2 to the y can never equal 0. Think about putting in positives or negatives as we did, and it's just never going to give you out a 0 for x. In the same way, you can't get out a negative because your base is positive. So x can never be a negative. So that means that we have a domain from 0 to infinity. The range for this graph is all real numbers. So let's keep in mind that if you have log base 2 of x, the x is only going to be a value from 0 to infinity. If we replace x with any other expression, that expression has to be greater than 0. So here we replaced x with x squared minus 2x. Let's first factor the x squared minus 2x. So this becomes a product of x times x minus 2. That x times x minus 2 has to be greater than 0. There are two key points here, and those key points are where x times x minus 2 equals 0. And that would be where x is 0 or 2. So we're going to put those two numbers on a number line. We're breaking the number line up in three intervals, and then we're going to test points on each interval. So let's test a point to the left of 0. So I tried negative 1. Plugging in negative 1 gives me 3, which is greater than 0. So that indicates that everything on that interval that's less than 0 is going to be part of the domain. Try testing another point that's less than 0, for instance, negative 2. Negative 2 would give you negative 2 times negative 4, which is positive. So everything on that side is going to give you two negatives multiplied together, which gives you a positive, and they're all going to be included in the domain. Let's try a point between 0 and 2. Let's test x equal 1. At x equal 1, I got out a negative. Everything on that interval is going to be a negative. So I'm not going to include it as part of the domain. Next, I'm testing a point greater than 2. So I chose 3, and I got positive 3. Again, everything on that interval is going to be two positives multiplied together, which is going to give you a positive again. So our domain is going to include everything from negative infinity to 0, and everything from 2 to infinity. Now, that means that we have two branches of our graph and two vertical asymptotes. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0 and another one at x equals 2. We don't have any part of our graph between 0 and 2 because we would be taking the log of a negative. So our two branches are where we have it as part of our domain. From negative infinity to 0, we have a branch, and from 2 to infinity, we have a branch. Here's another example. We have log base 2 of x minus 1 over x plus 2 squared. To find the domain, we're going to set the ratio greater than 0. Now, when you're looking at the key points for a ratio, you want to include where it's 0 or where it's undefined. In this case, it would be 0 at 1 and undefined at negative 2. So we're going to put both those numbers on our number line and test points on each interval. So we're going to test a point to the left of negative 2, so I found negative 3. And that gave me a negative, so I will not include this interval 
as part of my domain. Testing a point between negative 2 and 1, I tested 0. And I got a negative 1 fourth. So this interval will also not be included in the domain. Testing a point beyond 1, I chose to test 2. And I got a positive. So I'm going to include that interval on my domain. I'm not including the 1 because that's where it is 0, and we can't take the log of 0. So the only place where we're going to have a positive for this ratio is beyond 1. So our domain is from 1 to infinity, which means that our graph has one vertical asymptote at x equal 1, and our graph is going to be strictly to the right of that line. Here's our next example. We have log base 2 of x times x plus 3 over x minus 4. Again, it's a ratio, so we want to find key points where it's equal to 0 or where it's undefined. So it'll be equal to 0 at 0 and negative 3 and undefined at 4. So we're going to test interval um, points on each one of those four intervals. So I tested x equal negative 4 and I got a negative, so I'm not going to include that as part of my domain. Next, I'm testing x equal to negative 1, which is between the negative 3 and 0. And I got a positive, so I'm going to include that as part of my domain. Between 0 and 4, I tested 1. And I got a negative, so that will not be part of my domain. And um, beyond 4, I tested 5. So I got out a positive there, so I'm going to include beyond 4 as part of my domain. So the domain of this function is from negative 3 to 0 and from 4 to infinity. Let's take a look at what our graph looks like based on that information. We have three vertical asymptotes, one at negative 3, one at 0, and one at x equal 4. And two branches of our graph on the interval from negative 3 to 0 and on the interval from 4 to infinity. Again, working with the same function, we're going to expand it out, or we did expand it out. And remember that when you expand it out, what's in the numerator has a positive in front of it, and what's in the denominator has a negative. When you're looking at the domain of the expanded version, it's a little bit different from the original. If you look at log base 2 of x, the x there would have to be greater than 0. For log base 2 of x plus 3, it would have to be greater than negative 3. And for log base 2 of x minus 4, it would have to be greater than 4. So we take the intersection of those four intervals, which would have been the 4 to infinity, or you can say the most restrictive one. So the domain of the expanded version is from 4 to infinity only. So what we're doing is um, we often take the original function and restrict the domain when we ask you to expand it out so that the two graphs would look exactly the same. So this graph only includes the interval or the branch that was beyond 4. It doesn't include the other interval that we found between 0 and negative 3. So oftentimes when they give you this um, instructions to expand, they'll say x is greater than 4 and that's because they want the more restrictive domain. Okay, thank you for watching Demystifying Math.